on board Gautam Shah then and figure out what the market is going to chart as its next uh, course. Gautam, hi, good morning. Good to have you on the show as always. Gautam, you know, before the index, I want to talk about what's happening within the Nifty Bank because that's dictating how the index has been moving off late. A, uh, is the poison out of the system for HDFC Bank? It doesn't seem to be the case because right now the stock is lower by another half a percent. And B, can ICICI Bank uh, take leadership now on the Nifty Bank? Uh, good morning, Aisha. Well, you know, the bank nifty does not feel like an index. You know, the problem is uh, four stocks constitute for 50, 60 percent of the index. So if those four stocks do well, the bank nifty does well. And if those four stocks come under pressure, obviously the bank nifty comes under sizable pressure. And we saw that in the recent past, you know, given what happened to HDFC Bank. But to be honest, for the last two and a half years, the stock has been in a broad range. 1450 area on the downside, 1700 area on the upside. It's actually been a no-brainer underperformer all along. And there's no point living in hope unless the price action itself gives you the indication that things are changing. So I think if you really look at the ratio chart of HDFC Bank divided by the Nifty, you'll see that for the last three years, it's been downward sloping. So there was never a reason to commit big in that stock, even though it might have been fundamentally super strong. We remain of the view that somewhere around 1450, there could be solid demand coming in. So the chances of some pullback from these levels are pretty high. And I think we also saw a bit of a selling climax in the recent past because there has been so much talk around it, uh, you know, and, and, and people are actually wanting the stock to do well. But any which way, I think banks in general look good. 45,500 on the bank nifty is an excellent support. We rebounded from there. And I think the chances of a bigger turnaround in banks in general, maybe X of HDFC Bank is pretty high and SBI remains our high conviction idea. So there is upside in the banks, but I don't think it's going to be a big contributor to the nifty move from here. You did say that SBI could be one of those special stocks when we spoke with you last time, that it could do special things in 2024, so we are watching out for that one. But the other space which is seeing quite a bit of action is Pharma, right? And you also talk about how there's a rebound possibly in the offering there. Which are the top, uh, you know, stocks there that look interesting? See, when you are at levels close to 22,000, I think risk reward plays a very important role in what you do at the markets. And I think at current levels, pharma offers a lot of value. We've seen some lovely trends uh, shape up in the recent past. I mean, look at what Sun Pharma has done. It's just been a nice, clean, steady move up all along. Uh, doesn't have anything to do what the market does. And I think these are the kind of trends that you want to commit yourself in. So pharma, I think, as an index continues to look super solid. And I do see another 10% upside for the index. So stocks could give you, give you anywhere between 13 to 20%. With in the pharma space, Sun Pharma, Dr. Eddy's, DV's lab and Cipla, you know, which came out with results and it's uh, reacting today, all look super solid on the charts. And I still believe that at these levels also for the market, uh, one should commit into pharma because I think this is a trend that is going to continue for the next couple of quarters. So pharma and IT are actually our favorites in the current market from a risk reward angle. In IT then, if we were to get stock specific, given that you're talking about it being an outperformer. Well, yeah, I think our working target for the IT index has been about 39,000. So I think we will get there gradually. Midcap IT has already seen a very smart move in the recent past and continues to run up. I mean, look at stocks like Persistent, Mastec, uh, LTTS, CoForge, uh, you know, Emphasis. All of these stocks, I feel, have the potential to go up another 10 to 20 percent, uh, maybe even more if you have a slightly longer term time frame. And if you look at the large cap IT stocks, I think the kind of rebound that we saw post Infosys results, I think just, just changed the game to some sense. I think smart money is trying to get in there. Institutions are far more convinced about buying into IT. And it is probably one of the few indices in the market to be far away from lifetime highs. So I think it offers great value even at these prices. It's not overbought. It's not overly valued. And I think there is some sense of the earnings in the next couple of quarters. So I think all the top stocks with TCS being our favorite, followed by HCL Tech, Infosys, Tech Mahindra, and then Wipro. Gautam, I have to shift uh, stance to what's happening within the broader markets, right? And railways, uh, look at the kind of move that you've seen in this entire sector just last week alone. I mean, we were just looking at the valuations of an RVNL, IRFC, IRCON, etc. Any of these names that you tra uh, track and do you really think the momentum is going to sustain? 
you know, we were very bullish on it all along because I thought that the breakouts were very clean. And remember, these are stocks, so this is a theme that broke out after doing nothing for about five to six years. So it's understandable that it's seen such a rally. But now the rally has become parabolic. I think it's beyond fundamentals and it's beyond technicals. So these are levels where one can easily take profits. In fact, we have been recommending to take profits in the recent past. And I think the rally is a little overdone. You might miss the last phase of the rally, which is okay. But I think the risks of holding railway stocks or adding railway stocks at these levels is pretty high. Yes, it might be a three-year theme, five-year theme, but somebody who's looking at three to six months, I don't think these are levels where you can commit. So take profits, move to other spaces in the market. There are newer sectors, newer themes, which are, you know, coming out of hibernation and you rather concentrate on them. Let's have that list then, Gautam. What is it that you see coming out of hibernation and where is it that we can put uh, fresh money to work? I think metals have started to look quite interesting. So we've been watching uh, many of the met top metal stocks very closely. I mean, look at a Nalco. I feel it's a very high conviction idea for us for the whole of 2024. I think it can deliver super normal returns. Steel Authority of India, Tata Steel, JSW Steel. I, I feel that all of these stocks, maybe they might not mirror the move of railway, but definitely, uh, you know, it's going to beat the nifty returns for sure for the next two to three quarters. Auto Ancillary, I think, is a very interesting space that we like. Fertilizer, I think, is a space that we like. Paper, paper stocks, you know, we just recommended J JK Paper a few days back. That's a space that we like. And that entire unlock theme, you know, which is airlines, hotels, I think this is a big theme that's going to continue in play. So if you look at Indigo, you look at, uh, you know, uh, 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 some of the uh, some of the other uh, Indian hotels, uh, Lemon Tree, uh, and some of the other unlock theme stocks like uh, Safaya Foods, uh, Deviani International. I feel these are stocks, you know, which are very good on fundamentals and ha haven't done as well as some of the other themes in the market. So they should do quite well. Let's talk about the frontline index itself, Gautam. Um, as far as the Nifty is concerned, where do you see that one headed? Because uh, for the interim, people believe that we have already made a bit of a top for the at least next five to six months. Would you concur with the view? Or are you expecting a pre-budget and a pre-election rally as well? Well, five, six months is too long to look into the future because, you know, these days the world changes in about a quarter. Uh, and, uh, you know, recent highs are just 3% away. So I don't think I'm in a position to, to say that we topped out. But I do believe that 20 to 200, 300 is an important resistance. It might not get taken out in a hurry. It might maybe take a few weeks. And on the downside, the 21, 300 area is an important support. And after the kind of rally that you saw in November and December, if the Nifty just stays in this band for another few weeks, maybe until the budget or just slightly post the budget, that's actually the best case scenario because you want bull markets to go through consolidations, you know, rotational corrections, which is what we've seen in the recent past. So I'm actually very happy if the Nifty is boring because there are much better opportunities outside of the Nifty. Look at the Nifty Next 50 Index, obviously the mid caps and small cap space, which is, continues to buzz despite all the overbought signs on the charts. Okay, and what about the metal sector as a whole, uh, Gautam? Is that something that you would be avoiding or looking at selectively? And if so, which stocks? So I just spoke about metals and I mentioned that, that you know, it's probably one of our high conviction ideas for the rest of this year. Uh, looks very good on the charts. It's coming out of many months of uh, consolidation and underperformance. And now a lot of select uh, setups collectively have, uh, you know, uh, done well and looking good for more. So Nalco, Steel Authority, Tata Steel, JSW Steel on top of our list. And I expect all of these stocks to deliver super normal returns this year. What's the view on Reliance Industries as well as l &T? See, LNT has been my favorite all along. I think every time I've been on your channel in the last couple of years, the one large cap high conviction idea that we've shared all along was LNT. At these levels, you cannot commit fresh because I think a lot of positives are in the price. But I think Reliance has come to a point where it can actually start to support the index. You know, for the last one, one and a half years, it was the problem for the index. Now it could actually support it. And this breakout that took place in the recent past looks genuine. And I do believe that this attempt should take Reliance to that number of 3,000, which it's not been able to do for a very long time. And 2550, 2600 now becomes a solid base. So IT and Reliance put together, you know, this these two baskets put together should keep the market safe. And that gives me the confidence. 
Gautam, you highlighted your views on the Nifty, but do you think this outperformance at large from the mid and the small cap index vis-a-vis -vis what the Nifty does, would that continue? I think it's going to continue, Aisha, and the best way to understand that is through ratio charts. So if you simply did a mid cap index divided by the Nifty or the small cap index divided by the Nifty, you'll see that they are in mega uptrends and this is not going to end anytime soon. Also, one can, cannot compare what's happening today in the broader markets to anything that's happened in the last 25 years. When have you heard 7,500 crores coming into the broader markets, mid caps and small caps every single month from the domestic liquidity side? This has never happened in the history of Indian markets. That's probably the reason the framework has changed, markets have evolved, and I think quality stocks in mid caps and small caps will continue to be rewarded. Grade C and grade D, you need to be very careful because everything is moving at the same time. But if you stick to grade A and B in mid caps and small caps, you will still be rewarded even at these levels. You flagged off railways. What are the other spaces where you think there's the amber light and the warning signal and one needs to either avoid or at least profit take? See, I think there's no uh, red flags or warning signals as such because many of these are structural stories. But there has to be a point where you have to take a call to take profits. I think uh, that's a call that we are taking in railway stocks. That's a call that we are taking in real estate. We've been very bullish on it for the last couple of years. I think from a near-term perspective, it's a little overdone. So real estate, select auto stocks, uh, you know, I, I, and... Uh, um, uh, if you look at capital goods, I think that's also had a wonderful run up in the last two and a half years. That's also looking quite overbought. So stay away from these segments and look to commit in IT, pharma, metals, select banks and select chemical stocks. Point taken. Gautam, on that note, we let you go. Thanks so much for making time and speaking with us. So at least on the charts, it seems like 